In this demonstration, I show you how to run the reconfiguration wizard to upgrade an Oracle WebLogic Server domain. I created the existing domain with WebLogic Server version 10.3.6. The target version of WebLogic Server is 12.1.3. Before you run the reconfiguration wizard on an existing domain, check your applications to ensure that they are compatible with the new version of WebLogic Server. Shut down all servers in the domain. Back up the domain. Install the new version of WebLogic Server. For details on what you should do before running the wizard, see the Prepare to Upgrade section of the Upgrading Oracle WebLogic Server document. Log in to the system on which the administration server runs. I have already logged into my administration server machine, which is running Oracle Linux. Open a terminal window and navigate to Oracle Home slash Oracle Common slash Common slash Bin. I previously set up a variable for Oracle Home. Execute the command reconfig.sh to bring up the graphical reconfiguration wizard. On the Select Domain screen, enter or browse to the existing domain location. Then click Next. The Reconfiguration Setup Progress screen shows the wizard's progress in applying reconfiguration templates. The upgrade is also validated. When this step completes, click Next. The Domain Mode and JDK screen displays the mode and JDK of the domain. The mode comes from the existing domain and cannot be changed by the wizard. The JDK that was used when you installed the new version of WebLogic Server is automatically selected as the JDK for the reconfigured domain, but you can select a different JDK. I leave the default JDK selected. Click Next. On the JDBC Data Sources screen, the data sources defined in the existing domain are listed in the lower half of the screen. Select the data source or data sources for which you want to change settings. Once a data source is selected, you can update the values of its settings. Note that if you select multiple data sources, the text varies among component schemas might be displayed in certain fields, indicating that the current values of those fields are different across the selected data sources. If you change the values in such fields, the new values are applied to all the selected data sources. In this demonstration, I select my one data source and update its database driver and the database user's password. In addition to changing a data source's settings, you can convert the data source from a generic data source to one to be used with an Oracle Rack database by selecting either Convert to GridLink or Convert to Rack Multidata Source. If you select either of these options, when you click Next, additional screens are displayed. When you are finished with data sources, click Next. On the JDBC Data Sources Test screen, Data sources that were selected on the previous screen are tested. If none were selected on the previous screen, you can select them now and click the Test button. The results of the tests are indicated in the Status column. A successful test is indicated by a green check. Details are displayed in the Connection Result Log area. If any tests fail, use the Back button to change settings for the failing data source. When all tests are successful, click Next. This screen is displayed only if the domain you are reconfiguring uses a per host node manager. The only type of node manager available in WebLogic Server version 10.3.6 was per host, so the screen displays here. 
Use this screen to select the Node Manager configuration to use for the reconfigured domain. The resulting configuration depends on the combination of options you select for Node Manager type and Node Manager configuration. In this demonstration, I select the Per Domain Default Location type. So the Node Manager will be Per Domain and the Node Manager Home will be under the domain in a directory named Node Manager. For the Node Manager configuration, the choices are Create New Configuration A per domain Node Manager configuration will be created for the reconfigured domain by using the default settings in nodemanager.properties. You can modify this file after the domain has been successfully reconfigured. Migrate Existing Configuration The existing per host Node Manager configuration will be migrated to a per domain configuration for the reconfigured domain. This does not include environment specific settings for listen address, listen port, start script name, Java home, and log file. You will need to set those manually after the domain has been successfully reconfigured. I select create new configuration. Next, I enter the Node Manager credentials. Then click Next. On the Advanced Configuration screen, select all categories for which you want to update the domain's configuration. For each category you select, the appropriate configuration screen is displayed. If you do not select any items on this screen, the Configuration Summary screen is displayed next. I select all the options I am given so that you can see those screens. Then click Next. From this screen, you can add, delete, or clone managed servers. You can also change the settings for an existing managed server. In this demonstration, I clone one of the managed servers. To clone a server, you select its row and click Clone. The clone appears in its own row and you can edit its attributes. All applications and libraries that are targeted to the source server are also deployed to the clone. In addition, data sources and some of the other services targeted to the source server are automatically targeted to the clone. See the upgrade guide for details. When finished with Manage Servers, click Next. Use the Clusters screen to add or delete clusters. You can also change the settings for an existing cluster. I do not change anything here, so I click Next. Use the Next screen to assign Manage Servers to clusters. I select Server 3 and click the right arrow to move it under Cluster 1. Then click Next. Use the Machines screen to add or delete machines or to modify the settings for an existing machine. I leave the machine configuration as it is. Then click Next. Use this screen to assign servers to machines. I select Server 3 and click the right arrow to move it under Machine 1. Then click Next. Use the Deployments Targeting screen to target applications for deployment on servers or clusters. Note that applications associated with the product for which you are configuring the domain are automatically targeted to the managed server created for that product or to the cluster to which that managed server is assigned. This screen is for you to target applications to additional servers and clusters. To target an application deployment to a cluster or server, in the Targets area, select the cluster or server on which you want to deploy an application. In the Deployments area, select the application. Then click the right arrow. Repeat this process as needed. When you are finished with deployments, click Next. Use this screen to target services to the appropriate managed servers or clusters. Services that are associated with the product for which you are configuring the domain are targeted automatically to the managed server created for that product or to the cluster to which that managed server is assigned. 
In this screen you can target services to additional servers and clusters. In the Targets area, select a cluster or server. In the Services area, select a service. Click the right arrow to target the service to the server or cluster. I do not need to make any changes here, so I click Next. Review the detailed configuration settings of the domain before continuing. You can change which items are displayed by selecting a filter option from the View drop-down list. If you need to change the configuration, click the back button to return to the appropriate screen and make changes. When you are satisfied with the configuration, click Reconfig to reconfigure the domain. The existing domain is reconfigured in place. Its location does not change. This screen displays the progress of the reconfiguration process. During this process, Domain information is extracted, saved, and updated. Schemas, scripts, and other such files that support your Fusion Middleware products are updated. When the process completes, click Next. The final screen indicates whether the reconfiguration process completed successfully or it failed. The screen also displays the location of the domain that was reconfigured and the administration console URL. If the reconfiguration process did not complete successfully, an error message is displayed to indicate the reason. Take appropriate action to resolve the issue. If you cannot resolve the issue, contact My Oracle Support. Click Finish to exit the wizard. Thank you for watching this demonstration.